Unless you are a Chanel connoisseur, you probably didn't know these things about Chanel. Welcome back, I'm Mimi, your host. Chanel is a historical figure and fashion legend. But stick around until the very end because I guarantee you that there will be at least one thing in this video that you did not know about Chanel, especially the last point in this video. So if you wanna know what that is, stick around until the very end. Chanel popularized tanning when she came back from France as tan as a cup of chocolate milk. Until the mid 1920s, aka the flapper era, floppity flap, getting some summer color was definitely scandalous and something you did not want to be caught with. Especially in some parts of the world, tanning is something that's looked down upon as part of manual labor, not associated with the upper class. And Chanel, when she came back from France, France off a yacht in Cannes in 1923. That was when tanning became the huge trend that it is now at least in the Western world. Prior to that, Americans and Europeans, they didn't want to toast their toast at all, let's just say. It was associated with the lower working class. If you're on vacations and leisuring, is that a word? Leisuring? Relaxing, out of the sun, you have a fair complexion. Especially in the Victorian era, when people would use skin lighteners and things to bleach their skin to make it lighter. And having tan skin was associated with labor, and hence a harder life, so you would want to be as ghostly pale as possible. I don't know if y'all know, but some of the Victorian ladies would cake lead on their faces and being ghostly pale, to me, kind of just means like death. So unless you want to look like death, I would personally stay away from that. It would give their skin a translucent pallor and make them look more ghostly. And women would go so far to avoid getting that that they would walk around and sand with parasols, bonnets, long sleeves, and gloves just to avoid getting a freaking freckle. Though in Asia, there are women who do walk around with umbrellas to keep themselves from getting tan. That is an interesting divide between the Western world after Chanel popularized tanning and the Eastern world is that in Western beauty standards, you want to become tan to kind of show off that you have the ability to live a leisurely life of tanning, going to beaches and warm vacations and travel. But in the Eastern world, you want to avoid getting tan because it's still associated with the traditional Victorian values of being lighter means you don't work in the sun and you don't have a harder life laboring around. So up until the 1920s, both the Eastern and Western world had the same idea of tanning was bad, but that shift happened afterwards with Chanel. And I think it's actually kind of ironic because Chanel is very popular in Asia and so are many other luxury brands. But it's interesting that the beauty philosophy that Chanel brought with her to the Western world was not adapted in the Eastern world, even though Chanel is now very popular in China and Japan. She made women take off their corsets, scoot up their hems, and ditch the sleeves. So, you know, more skin was exposed to the sun. So she was really a pioneer for many things in fashion, which also just so happened to be you getting a tan and not worrying about every single little freckle that you get from sun tanning. She just happened to hit the stride of the 1920s because in the age of flappers and bootleggers, it was about that mentality about breaking conventional norms. So in a way, Chanel was kind of like a hippie of her times. And if you're enjoying this video, please go down and give this video a like so that it can spread to more people. And if you haven't already, please subscribe as well because you won't want to miss fashion, fashion history, and couture videos that we have coming up on this channel. Chanel number no. five, the iconic perfume has a glass stopper. The glass stopper itself is based off of Place Vendome. Some of their watch faces itself that you can buy from Chanel have a rectangular watch face that are shaped like Place Vendome from plan view when you're looking top down at it. And that's what the glass stopper on the Chanel number no. five bottle is as well. Chanel number no. five is made from flowers grown from only one place in the world and is a buyer of 100% of their jasmine. And if you shop at Chanel often enough, gotta be 
a very frequent shopper to do this, but you get your own mannequin. The day after the show, clients are able to receive appointments only in the couture salons at the original store, the 31 Rue Cambon, which is the original store that Chanel opened up in and the very first store. The fittings for these couture appointments go up to five if you're buying a wedding dress which to me is expected because if you're buying a wedding dress you're getting fitted anyways maybe once or twice but five is definitely very thorough you want to make sure the item fits and five fittings would definitely do that these fittings itself are orchestrated by the head seamstress which is even more prestigious. The regular clients of the house have their own wooden mannequins in their exact measurements. Think of how much you would have to shop at Chanel in order for them to make you not just VIP client, but also to have wooden mannequins made out of your own measurements. Like you must be in like the top 1% of their sales or something in order to get that. I don't know exactly what it is, but that is definitely like Chanel backstage VIP passes right there. An haute couture gown is easily six figures, and most people don't even make six figures in a year. Some people never even see the light of buying an haute couture dress. Haute couture, by the way, means high sewing in French. Did you know there is a Chanel Broadway musical? Coco Chanel's life inspired the musical Coco, which first premiered on Broadway in 1969. And when it opened, Coco was played by the Hollywood actress Katherine Hepburn, which I believe is related to Audrey Hepburn. She's a very iconic actress in Hollywood. And this was Katherine Hepburn's only musical stage ever. It was an instant hit and it was nominated for seven Tony Awards. I don't know who Tony is or why he's so famous, but if he has an award named after him, you can bet that that's a very big award. Two of which were, were won for Best Featured Actor in a Musical and Best Costume Design. And the last and final thing that you did not know about Chanel, which I'm betting most of you do not know this fact, I got this off of a book that I got recently about Chanel. Chanel stores have tweed carpets like the Chanel tweed suits, and they're based off of the Chanel tweed suits. Chanel actually took tweed from men's wear. She adapted it from men's sportswear, such as men's jackets and coats, which is why when you historically look up tweed, it's generally a men's item. And it was meant to be used in men's sportswear, like sporting coats, which are now referred to as blazers, because they were meant for sporting events. You know, a lot of the old riche sports, such as polo, they typically wore blazers. One of the typical textures and fabrics used was tweed, and Chanel adapted that. Chanel definitely took a lot of inspiration from menswear, which is why I think she was so unique and liberating for the time. And now this iconic piece of Chanel history has been woven into their carpets as well. If you watch my what I got for Christmas video, hopefully I'll link it in the description if I can remember, I got a book by Peter Marino called The Architecture of Chanel. And Peter Marino is a famous architect who has designed for decades many of Chanel's boutiques as well as Dior, I believe, and Louis Vuitton. He has designed a lot of designer boutiques, including Chanel. And he's done a lot of them specifically for Chanel because he's known them, he knows what they want. They're like Chanel tweed suits. They're kind of similar materials and such and everything. And it's just kind of unbelievable to think that there's that kind of piece of history under your feet and you don't even think about it when you walk into the boutique. If you loved this video and you loved learning about Chanel, please go down and give this video a like so that it can spread to more people. And likes are free, so why not? Follow me on my Instagram here. I will give Give you notifications every so often about when this video is coming out as well as sneak peeks so you won't want to miss that and subscribe if you love couture style and analysis aka CSA because that's what we do on this channel and you won't want to miss your weekly CSA PSA out of the press weekly we'll have a lot of fun fashion history and couture videos if you'd like to support my full-time endeavor of becoming a creator then please consider buying me a monthly coffee on patreon because I would love to make this my full-time endeavor as well you can shop my closet on Depop, Mercari, or Poshmark, link in the description down below. Check out my next video here, which is part of my series Fashion History 101, the history of Princess Diana, the Queen of Bags. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!